when people started riding the fork internally, they didn't want to take it off their bikes. The feedback we were getting was that just the harder you pushed the fork, the smoother it felt and the more confident it felt. All right, we are here with Bill Brown, head of engineering on a pretty cool project. This upside down fork, uh, Fox Podium fork. So what is going on here? Why did you guys do an upside down fork? Walk us through this thing. Uh, yeah, thank you. This is the 2026 Fox Podium fork. It's an inverted fork, single crown. And our, our goal was to make the best descending single crown fork possible. You guys do already have the 38 in the lineup. That fork is gonna continue to be in the lineup. This is just getting added. What did this accomplish that you couldn't do with that? When we started this project, we were looking at ways to reduce friction in the chassis. And uh, if we could reduce friction in the chassis, we could add damping to the damper. And we wanted to do that to gain better control and better grip and offer better comfort for the user. As we were exploring friction in the chassis, the team suggested, should we look at a, an inverted architecture? because this type of architecture has some benefits for friction. Those benefits are an increased bushing overlap and the fact that when, when this fork compresses, this axle, as this axle gets closer to this lower bushing, as the fork compresses, the leverage, the force that this axle has on the bushing decreases. And that has a positive influence on the contact pressure at the bushings. That also helps to keep friction low when the fork is loaded. So we started exploring an inverted chassis as a way to reduce friction. We knew it would add weight. We'd get questions on torsional stiffness, but we wanted to make some prototypes to test in the lab and we wanted to make some prototypes to ride. When people started riding the fork internally, they didn't want to take it off their bikes. The feedback we were getting was that just the harder you pushed the fork, the smoother it felt and the more confident it felt. Yeah, you guys had kind of mentioned that in the presentation. A lot of these athletes, you know, we obviously only have one fork here. No one has been able to ride it. We're gonna get on the fork eventually. Um, but they just like didn't want to give the fork back. Like I talked to Remy Gauvin and he said, yeah, I got to go do that one ride to do some media and I didn't want to give it back. Um, what's kind of feedback you've been giving, getting from them? The, uh, the four aft stiffness of this fork, it, it approaches a downhill fork and so in, in terms of uh, maintaining geometry of the bike under really heavy braking loads or in really steep terrain, it just inspires a lot of confidence. And, and then the reduction in friction, this fork stays very active under braking, very active through really rough terrain, just never surprises you in a bad way. Yeah. Um, have you spent any time on the I fork? I have ridden oh, yeah. this fork. You're one of the lucky few. In fact, I've ridden this exact fork right here. <laughs> All right, yeah. This... I had to give it up for this event. All right, so Podium and 38, they are still existing in the lineup together. Uh, who would you say the 38 rider is? Who would you say the Podium fork rider is? You know, a, a rider on a, on a long travel bike, 160, 170 travel bike, whether it be an enduro style bike or, or a long travel e-bike, a rider who's going to prioritize just pure descending performance over everything else. Um, and, and when I say everything else, I mean primarily weight. A rider on really steep terrain, you know, this, this fork shines in those conditions and in that use case. Travel numbers on the podium. You guys mentioned 150, 160, 170. Is there a reason you didn't do 180, 190 on the inverted fork? There is. Um, our, there's three priorities when, when working on a, a fork chassis. Um, weight, stiffness, and friction. And for this project, um, weight was the third priority. The, the main priorities were stiffness and friction. And so you know, even though weight was a third priority, we didn't ignore it. Um, we, we didn't set out to make the heaviest fork we could possibly make. Yeah, going to 180, especially 190, the tubes get longer. Every, everything gets a little bit longer in this fork and it adds weight. Crown has to get bigger. We were trying to balance travel with weight and the feedback we were getting from uh, Jordy and our race team was, you know, our athletes are racing 170 travel forks. They're not racing 180, no one's racing 190. And so we decided to cap it at 170 because of that. Well, uh, yeah, that is the new podium fork. Bill Brown, head of engineering on this project. He's done a lot of cool things. Last year we chatted about the 
dampers this year, upside down forks. Really excited to see how the podium fork rides. Uh, can't wait to get on it. Bill, you and your team might be onto some magic here. Uh, thanks for having us out. Thanks for running us through the fork. And we'll see you next Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Sweet. Thanks, Bill.